Hi there everyone, today we have another special guest. You may recognize him. It is James Grime, mathematician, star of the Number File video series, which apparently is quite good. We're here in the archives and we have dug out three mathematical treasures. And just to keep you watching to the end, the thing in here that we're doing last is amazing. So keep watching. Keith, what have we got first? Okay, well, first of all, it's a notebook and it's a notebook from someone very special. And it says on the front, copies and corrected papers. This is one of George Boole's notebooks. Right. So George Boole, he's the father of modern mathematical logic. We've got the manuscripts of, of several of George Boole's major books and papers. But I like these because these, these are just the scribbly notebooks where he's thinking about mm. things, he's copying things from other works, and he's correcting his own. So it's a mishmash of material, and it's the way Boole was thinking about what he was writing. Well, this is fascinating. If you were making logical arguments, it went back to Aristotle. Mm. So uh, his arguments were things like, all dogs have four legs, Rover is a dog, therefore Rover has four legs. Mm -hmm. So you can make logical deductions yes. through these kind of statements. And what Bull did is he turned that into mathematical equations. Mm. So he turned those statements into equations that you could add and multiply and come to a conclusion, which was the first time something like that had been done. So you can see something's been crossed out. This is what my notebooks would look like as well. Almost you know, indecipherable perhaps to someone else. We look like geniuses when we finally publish because we publish the final result. We don't show all these rough working out. Because you never get this in the movies, do you? Mathematicians always <laughs> use blackboards in the movies. <laughs> yeah, if you see the movies, we're always writing on uh, glass walls yeah, as well. Yeah. Haven't you guys found paper yet? <laughs> <laughs> This must be quite nice for someone like you to get to see these handwritten notes. This is really cool to see his you know, original thinking, his mistakes, his working out. This is the first time something like this was done. And then this was followed up by other mathematicians later. And then his work was, did influence what we use today in computers. So all the work we do now with computers uses logic using ones and zeros. And it's using logical arguments like a, a mathematical equation. Uh, and that started here. So from George Ball, we're going, are we going back in time now? Keith? We are going back in time, yes. Yeah. So this is a volume from 1708. John Wilkins, one of the very early fellows of the Royal Society. These are collected works, so they're works which were published earlier in the 1640s, 50s, 60s, 70s. But this is a nice compendium of, of what Wilkins was about. So this is his life work. I feel like there's something in my mind, somewhere in the back of my mind, I've heard this name before, but no, I'm not completely familiar with him. Let's dip into it because Wilkins really ranged over quite a, a lot of interesting topics. Here we go. It starts off with the discovery of a new world. And here he's, he's speculating on whether or not that the moon may be a world. So it's quite fun. So what's his definition of a world? Let's see if the answer happens to be where Keith's finger was at the time you asked the question. <laughs> that, that would be a lucky guess, wouldn't it? Yes. It is opaque spacious, not transparent, or diaphanous like crystal or glass, as Empodocles thought, who held the moon to be a globe of pure congealed air like hail enclosed in a sphere of fire. So it's definitely not that. Okay, <laughs> but that's what he's saying. He's saying, hey guys, this thing up there, this thing mm. up in the sky at night, that's yeah. solid. That's not made of like glass. Yeah, it must right. be a world. So it's, it's a world like the earth and okay. maybe people live there. Maybe they do. I don't know. No, not yet. I've seen the clangers. Yeah. Now he's saying that the Earth may be a planet. Didn't he know that? Well, yeah, but you've got to prove it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, sounds like a mathematician's okay. kind of thinking. Yep. This is the one you're going to be really interested in, okay. I think. Because for people who don't know or haven't seen James's other videos with us, he's really into codes and code mm. breaking. And this is where things get interesting. So this is Mercury, or the secret and swift messenger, showing how a man may with privacy and speed communicate his thoughts to a friend at any distance. Fantastic. Great. What Cody goodness can you see oh, here right. in the book? If I, let's have a look. Mm. So this one looks interesting. This looks like some sort of physical thing, though. Mm. So he's making something out of like strips of wood. And not maybe slide them? Sliding to get, yeah, yeah. them to make... I'm not quite sure how this one works. I don't know if it's like a grill cipher where you have like a piece of cardboard, you cut out holes, and you place it over the top of a book. Mm -hmm. So through the holes, you'd spell out a message on the book. Right? That's called a grill cipher. I don't know if it's exactly like that, but it's something physical that he's making there. So it's a, it's a mechanical yeah. code machine. It's, yeah, it's very Da Vinci code. Yeah. Something, something physical there he's making, which I would love to investigate further. This one's an interesting one. 
So this one's called an at bash cipher. So it's originally a Hebrew mm -hmm. type of code. So what you do here is you take the alphabet and then you write the alphabet backwards underneath it. So that means that A becomes Z, yes. B becomes Y. This one I find particularly interesting. So what he's done here is he's got the alphabet, there you go, A to Z, mm -hmm. and now he's turning that into these sets of five letters using A's and B's. Yes. So A is A, 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 and we've got A, 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 B for B and so on. So you're using A's and B's. Mm -hmm. This is essentially what we use on the internet today. When you're sending emails, your message gets turned into ones and zeros. Using this idea, he's used A's and B's here, but if you turn that into ones and zeros, this would be ASCII, this would be what we use now. John Wilkins is the father of the internet. Yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely. This was devised by Francis Bacon. Uh -huh. So this is the Bacon cipher, the mm. tastiest of all the ciphers. Yeah. We promised people this. I think we should go to this. What do you say, guys? I think we okay, should. Okay, I'm ready. Keith, again, I will let you do the honours with our now famous phrase, Keith, what's in the box? Well, let's take a look. I'm just donning the purple gloves of power. <laughs> the purple gloves of power? Yeah, yeah. Well, you have the white gloves of destiny. Do the purple gloves of power trump the white gloves of destiny? I think they do. I think they probably do. Right. So we have a little mathematical object here. And here we go. Uh, that is gorgeous. I'm just going to say that before I even ask about what it is. Beautiful, isn't it? But you can see we have some, some letters inscribed on it. And it says here, Charles Hudson of Calcutta. The solution and demonstration of the quadrature of the circle and geometric mean, 1831. Sounds like squaring the circle. Mm, OK, yeah. so what has he done here? Well, first of, first of all, James, what is squaring the circle? This is a famous thing. Yeah. And if, if you're like Keith and haven't watched Number File, you won't have seen James's excellent video right. on squaring the circle. Yeah, well, and squaring the circle, now known as, a, as an expression for something that's impossible, mm -hmm. uh, because it was a, a, originally a Greek problem, which was, can you make a square with the same area as a circle using the Greek methods, which was with a straight line and a compass, can you construct a square with the same area as a circle? It turns out you can't, but that was not easy to prove. Uh, and it was, wasn't proved until oh, the 18th century. This is a proof sent to the Royal Society as a physical object. So fellows could have a look at this in their meetings and just decide whether this guy had made it or not. And you can see there's some material here. So see letters to the Royal Society of London. So he sent some letters along with this as well of uh, January 1825. 1826, 1828, 1830. <laughs> so you're really convinced he's got the answer. And, uh, um, the letters didn't do it. This will. Can I? Oh, I don't have any gloves yes. All right. of, of destiny or yeah. power. People, I can take a hint. I people can take a hint. want to put the white gloves on, Brady. This came from Calcutta. Mm -hmm. Do we know anything about the person? So he was employed in government service out there and presumably in amongst his uh, administrative duties, he found time to do a bit of maths on the side. He's obviously taking some sort of tangent here and that's meant to be equal to the length of the, the square. Mm -hmm. And this must be the original circle, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I think when it's sitting there in the box with the red background, that is one of my favourite looking things we have featured so far on Objectivity. So, so Hudson has completely convinced you then, Brady? Brady's easily swayed by presentation. Yeah. If you had been in the Royal Society, you would have said, yep, yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Proven. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the nice box. Here is the old piece of canvas that it came off. Just keep it away because it's a little bit dirty, but you can see the discoloration on the back and the dust that had gathered on it. Over time, this has become rather weak and brittle, and you can see now that it is so weak it just wants to tear apart. Okay. It doesn't look in great condition, does it? Like bits are falling off and... No, of course it's been exposed to the atmosphere around it. It wasn't glazed in a frame, so the paper has turned a darker brown. I don't think it was ever a bright white paper, but it has discoloured through a combination of photooxidation from exposure to light and perhaps the acidity that was inherent within the paper and from the canvas. 